We're working down in Ecuador, forward-looking statements as usual. Um, the property here is in red, and uh, it's a very large land package. Uh, for the Americans in the audience, it's half a million acres. For everyone else, it's 208,000 hectares. Lots and lots of activity in Ecuador, as you probably are aware, if you've been following what's happening in the country. The majors are back. A lot of that has got to do with the political situation. We have a president now in Ecuador who is uh, a central rightist. He's a business-friendly guy, and uh, a lot of projects are moving ahead. Uh, the property here is outlined in red, uh, superimposed on the topography. Um, now, what you see downtrend, down to the south and west, a whole bunch of yellow and red uh, little uh, triangles here. These are actual deposits. Um, a lot of them have um, uh, resources and reserves on them. Mirador is an operating copper porphyry mine. It's run by the Chinese. Fruta del Norte I'll talk about a little bit more. It's an epithermal gold uh, deposit which is being mined very, very efficiently by Lundin Mining. And then just on our southern boundary, you'll see Warinces, second line down, Solaris. Solaris is a company that's gone from really nothing in about a year and a half to uh, a market cap of about a billion and a half dollars uh, Canadian. And that's based on one, uh, one porphyry uh, project called Warinces. Uh, we've got lots and lots of goodies similar to this uh, on our property and, uh, well, you know, I staked it for a reason. It's right on trend with everything else. Our company is uh, where, where we have no um, idea to ever, ever go into production. You can see here, this is the famous Lausanne, Lausanne uh, project value curve on the left-hand side, which he put together about 35 years ago. Uh, what I want to do is take this company from early expiration up to discovery and then punch it out to a major uh, or uh, in a joint venture situation or sell it or whatever, uh, but at the top of that curve. Uh, the reality is engineering development orphaned can take 10 to 15 years now, especially with the environmental movement active around the world, and you ain't going to get through to the end. Anybody in this room who tells you otherwise is lying or they've been smoking something. It just doesn't happen that way. 30 years ago it did, it doesn't happen that way anymore. Aurelian Resources, my previous company on the right hand side here went from 30 cents to $43. I'm trying to do it again. This is the property. We have two parallel epithermal belts in the south. Both of them are 30 kilometers long, 30 kilometers. There's nothing else in this room that approaches anything like that. Uh, in, the, uh, tri in the rectangular box there, we have uh, a number of, of uh, copper-silver sediment-hosted uh, showings and silver-lead zinc. Uh, so the silver-lead zinc's a bit like Red Dog up in, in Alaska, and the copper-silver would be like the Kuferschiefer in Poland. And then we have, uh, I'm just uh, outlining two of our porphyry zones here, Tadasham and Awacha, both very, very important and uh, a real focus. Now, what I've done in the last couple of months, I've actually grabbed the reins very, very tightly and uh, refocused the company into porphyry copper and to gold. Why? Because the gold price has hit more than $2,000 recently. And on the porphyry story, we got a company on our southern boundary worth a billion and a half bucks. We were tra chasing the sediment-hosted stuff. That's ended for the time being. I'm looking for a joint pe uh, venture partner, and I'd love to spend somebody else's money doing that. The epithermal stuff, what we have, they're Jurassic in age, um, so they date from the d uh, age of the dinosaurs, but this is what they would have looked like 140 million years ago. Basically silica terraces with lots and lots of steam coming out. Now we find the sil silica terraces, they're intact, uh, and of course the area is long, long since uh, a devoid of volcanic activity or hot springs. Uh, but what we need to do is to get underneath these sinters, what are called silicious sinters, into the goody zone underneath and find where the plumbing system was that supplied the hot water because eventually that thing gummed up 
with things, hopefully like gold, like silver, quartz, uh, quartz veins. That's where you're going to find this stuff. So you have to get strategically smart about this because your center is going to extend a lot further out from the actual plumbing zone beneath it. It's just flowing down the, the topography and dropping its silica. So what we see here in the red, um, now down in the bottom right hand corner, there's a rock here, it's called geyserite. Believe it or not, that's its name. It's composed of little spheres of silica and these, uh, these are formed, they're just like little pollen grains or sand grains that blow into the hot spring and the things in convecting all the time. And they, they pick up the silica, they end up rounded, but they, they uh, will show you 100% where the old vent system was. And that is where you want to go and drill. So um, on the edge of our property here, we have a, a number of uh, gold uh, alluvials that have uh, miners who have shown up just really in the last year or so. And what we've been doing here, our property is here outlined in the red. We have a number of places where we've been able to pan gold and we think that the gold is coming off of our property. Very, very important. This is one of our porphyry targets, but it's actually very, very big body of magnetism, magnetic rock. It's three kilometers by one kilometer in size. It's huge. It's called Tadasham. This, you folks have never seen this before but this is the conductivity image, and this is a resistivity low, and look at this bloody thing. What the hell else could this be other than an ore body? I, I'm thinking that this is a, an iron-rich scarn. It's highly, highly magnetic and highly resistive, and I think it's like this, Erzberg. Erzberg you may not have heard of. It was the first mine that was mined by Freeport McMoran near Grasberg back in the 1970s. You see the walls, they're very, very black because of the magnetite. This is another porphyry target, it's called a watcher. We have lots of lots of quartz sericite pyrite alteration on the surface, which is a great thing to find. These are conductivity images, they're actually projected from 600 meters down to the surface and superimposed on top of them. On the left hand side we're, here we have molybdenum and streams, on the right hand side we have copper and streams. What the hell else could this be other than a porphyry system? But it is big. And um, now it's going to be very difficult, almost impossible to see this. But um, these are a bunch of porphyries at the same scale as a watcher, which is up on the left here. What we're seeing here is that this is almost certainly going to be a cluster of porphyries and not just one. A cluster, and we're hoping it's a cluster like Warenza down to the south. These are our local stakeholders, very, very important people. Uh, my last uh, head of corporate social responsibility said that I couldn't get into this community up on the top right here uh, because uh, they just didn't want me being there. Uh, this is absolutely not the case. And here I am at a party three weeks ago opening up a water system for them. This is the closest site to Watcha. And this is the reason why we didn't attack, tackle a watcher for about four years. We, I was told we couldn't get back in there. These people are some of the nicest people you would ever meet in the whole world. And they, they uh, greeted me with open arms. Now this is a teaser for everyone. This is not on our property, but it is very close by. And this is the, one of the things that my geologists are doing right now. And you can see. Gold, 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 gold. These are uh, with black sands, these are uh, samples in the Batea, and we are busy trying to track this down, and we think it's coming from our property. So the bottom line here is I think we really have something that's potentially world class. The thing that's different about this company, I own 38%. I own 38% and I put, put my money on the line here. I put more than 20 million bucks into this thing. And that's money that I made from the Aurelian discovery and I'm recycling it here. Now, many, many people in the past have spent a fortune trying to create a second fortune, but I think that we have a really good chance not only of finding another Frutinel Norte here, but finding another Warenzo or two. Thank you very much.